alive. Okay. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to a Sunday school lesson here at a Helping Hand Ministry. Yes. A Christian Fellowship. Uh, on this uh, wonderful, I want to say beautiful Sunday morning. Yes, sir. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And we will rejoice and be, be glad, glad in, it. in it. And it's something about learning how to rejoice in the Lord. And, and the word says, rejoice in the Lord and again. I say rejoice. Yes. Amen. So Amen. So we want to, uh, to uh, rejoice in God and look at his word this morning uh, to see what he has to say to us. Uh, we uh, are going to be coming out of uh, Luke, yes. the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And uh, the, the, the title of this message this week is Healing on the Sabbath. Isn't that yeah. something? Yes, Healing sir. Healing. And I guess we can say it like this, uh, healing on a Sunday. <laughs> you know, and, and we need to understand what how Jesus feels about that. And we want to look and see exactly uh, what he had to say about that, okay? Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father God, thank you. Lord, we worship you. We adore you. We, we love you, God. Yes. And, and one of your commands is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and mind, thy strength, all that's within us. And we do, Father. We yes. come before your throne of grace, seeking your face and not just your hands, God. Asking that you move in our lives. Touch us in a special way that we may know the truth. And as Jesus said, and when you know the truth, it's going to set you free. So, Lord, today reveal to us the truth that lies in your word about healing on the Sabbath. And let us understand and and walk away with clear hearts and minds of, of how you feel about that. And we thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And, and there's only two outlines today. Uh, uh, the first one is the Lord of the Sabbath. That covers uh, uh, verses uh, 1 through 5, Luke 6, 1 through 5. And the second is doing good on the Sabbath. And uh, we're going to split that reading up between... Uh, uh, myself and Deacon. Deacon, you can read uh, 1 through 5, please. Yes, sir. Thank Amen. You. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfield and his disciple plucked ear of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And a certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. And Jesus answered them, saying, Have ye not read so much as this that David did when he when himself was in was hungry and they were with him? How how he went into the house of God and did take and eat the shroom bread and gave to them that was with him which is not unlawful to eat, but for the priest alone. <laughs> and he said unto them, that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Amen. 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 And continuing with 6 through 11, now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught. And a man was there whose right hand was withered. So the scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an, an accusation against him. Mm. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man who had the withered hand, Arise and stand here. Mm. He, rose, he arose and stood. And Jesus said to them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or destroy? And when he had looked around at all of them, at them all, he said to the man, mm. stretch out your hand. Mm. And he did so, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Mm. But they were filled with rage and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. <laughs> We're going to ask the Lord to bless the, the reading reading of his word. Yes. And, uh, and let's look at this, the facts, the principle, and the application. 
The facts are to reveal how traditions became more sacred than the word of God to the scribes and Pharisees. And, and that's, that's very interesting because they were so stuck uh, in tradition that they were uh, unable or unwilling to see uh, the good that could be done. Uh, the principle is this, to show that God's words can stand on its own and does not need a man's rules added to it. <laughs> and, and, you know, we, 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 so we, we're infamous of wanting to, to add, add yeah. to the rules. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's always been my thought that, that uh, you know, God gave us 10 commandments, but we have 550 commandments. <laughs> because we kept adding. You know, we can't keep the 10, but we add to, add. to, 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 to lessen the, the lesson the load or make it lighter for us. And so God's word can stand on its own. Uh, the application is this, to obey God from the heart not just in outward form. And, and remember, God is always looking at the heart. And, and remember this, that out of the heart flows the, the issues of life. And we will never be able to, to escape that. Yes. Uh, the golden text reads as such. And he said to them, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. That's uh, Luke 6, verse 5. Mm -hmm. and, and when we understand that, that uh, that Jesus is he's Lord. He's Lord every day. Yes, right. That's right. And and, and uh, so we, we can't just uh, uh, lock him up to say that that uh, Jesus is not Lord, but Jesus is Lord. Yes. Uh, let's look at uh, what was taking place here. It says that it came to pass, mm. and it came to pass that uh, it says on uh, on the second Sabbath after the first, mm -hmm. and. As Luke is writing this, he, he's, he's being, being very descriptive because this is the, like a, in a week's time. A lot has take, taken place in this week's time. Mm -hmm. It says on the second Sabbath after the first, he went throughout the grain field. So they, they've been busy from one, just say from one Sunday to the next Sunday. They've been very busy. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went about, remember the word says he went about doing good healing all of those who are oppressed of the devil. Yeah. And so here he comes, and they're, they're, they're not only, they've been laboring, but they're walking through the grain field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now according to um, to the, the, the scripture in, uh, in Deuteronomy, it was permissible right. for them to to take the, the grains and, and to eat them. Right. And that, that wasn't unlawful. Yes, that's right. You know, but but here we got, remember we were always talking about those guys watching. <laughs> and it's amazing how they just show up. You know, they pop up everywhere. Here, the disciples are walking through a grain field uh -huh. and those scribes and Pharisees are watching. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's the way that the enemy works. He always he's always watching. He's always there to accuse accuse you of something. And so it says here, and his disciples plucked the heads of the grains and was rubbing them in their hands. Mm -hmm. and, and so those guys that were watching, the Pharisees and the scribes, uh, said to them, why are you doing what's, 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 uh, what is not lawful to yeah. do? So based on what? What do you think they're basing that on? By them saying this is unlawful. What do they a law? On? Was it a law? Or it, was, it was a made-up law. <laughs> As they normally do. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. they made this thing up that it was unlawful to do this. To do anything on on, on, a, sam on, a, on a Sabbath. On the Sabbath. Yeah. Sabbath. yeah. 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 To, so, so somewhere in their mind, they got it that, and you know what, there is, uh, in the Levitical law, mm -hmm. there were certain things that you couldn't do. Yeah, But then sure. there were certain things that was permissible to do. Right, right. And so what they did, uh, they looked at this as this was something unlawful to do. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> And, uh, but there was nothing wrong with what the disciples were doing. Uh, actually, their gleaning was not considered stealing. Yeah. It wasn't considered uh, they was robbing anybody. They weren't mm -hmm. taking. They weren't taking anything uh, uh, that wasn't they weren't entitled to. Right. Matter of fact, uh, provisions were made for them to be able to do that. Right. They, they would never harvest all mm -hmm. of uh, the grains or, yes. or, or whatever they they get. Mm -hmm. Always leave some for for a hungry person. And so, uh, here's a practical point. God's people were required to provide food for the hungry. Mm -hmm. We should likewise care for the poor. And so, this was something that was put in 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 in, uh, in 
and play because you, uh, it's something Jesus said. He said that we're always going to have the poor with us. Yes, yes. And and if you're going to always have the poor, then that means you're always going to have the hungry with you us got, too. That's right. you got to provide and, for them. And, uh, and so he made provisions. There were provisions made so that these poor, hungry people can still get some, some sup supplements. Okay. Somebody said something? Pastor D said, make sure the volume up. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a it's the second button there on the top. Second, second in. Second And so, uh, so, but it was, uh, it was not, it was not unlawful uh, to do this on on the Sabbath. I'm guessing they're going. Uh, we go on and we look and see that. Uh, uh, Jesus, it, 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 it's interesting because the Pharisees uh, and the scribes, they asked the question. And their question was, why? You know, why do you, why are you doing what is, what is unlawful? And it's interesting because they were more concerned uh, uh, with uh, what they were doing then, uh, then they, I guess then they should have been. They should have been paying attention to what they should have been doing. And, and back in, in that day, I'm sure that the, 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 the Pharisees and the scribes, they had a, a list of do's and don'ts. <laughs> and, and so uh, according to their list, this was one of the, the don'ts. So they, they, they were saying that, that they should not have been, been doing this. But it's interesting how Jesus responded to them. In verse 3 it says, But Jesus answering them said, Have you not even read this? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's taking them back. Mm -hmm. Because you're supposed to be uh, Pharisees and scribes. You're supposed to be students of the word. Have you not read what happened with, uh, with, with King David? And so he goes on and he, he tells them this story. Have you not read this, what David did when he was hungry? He said, he and those who were with him, uh, how they went into the house of God and took and ate the showbread. Now, the showbread was there, and it was really designated just for the priests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, David and his men were hungry. They went into the house of the Lord and ate the showbread. <laughs> and, and then he says, um, and also gave to those uh, that were with, with, him, with him, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. Mm -hmm. And so, so he pointed out to them that that um, that this is something that that David took part of. But didn't you read that? <laughs> didn't, didn't in your studies? Didn't you come across that? So they were supposed to have been students of the word, and we find out that That's why it's not th that they uh, still neglected uh, certain aspects of, of learning the word. So when. So when the, and, and look at this, when the disciples did what they did, in, in the eyes of the religious leaders, they were guilty of reaping and threshing and winnowing, winnowing and preparing food. Mm -hmm. So they were guilty of all of those things. And, 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 and guess what? It's amazing how the, the Pharisees and the scribes took part of what God had said and, and blew, it, blew it all out of proportion. Because remember, even when God fed the, the children of Israel in the wilderness, remember that uh, that He only provided food for six days, <laughs> and and then on that on the sixth day, He was supposed to gather enough to last you the seventh day, mm -hmm. which would have been the Sabbath. And and it's interesting that that uh, so they take that concept and they say, well, you shouldn't have been doing this on the Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but yet. Uh, they took it out of context. <laughs> as so, they normally do. Yeah, as they normally do, yes. And the practical point here, again, says self-righteous people are always enforcing <laughs> rules that enable them to condemn others. Isn't that something? <laughs> you know, that, that self-righteous people, you know, that some uh, people that are always going to be right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah, they they yeah. can't do nothing wrong. Not and, a thing. And so, and so, but they're quick to to point the finger at somebody else and remember 
The old saying is that when you point the finger at somebody, there's three of them pointing, pointing back, back at you. At you. <laughs> That's right. And and so they they fail to realize that that uh you know they're trying to to get people to enforce something that they couldn't even do themselves. Mm. Uh, let's move on. And so uh, so the Son of Man, and so Jesus points out that uh, that the, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And it's, it's interesting because he was right there with them and it was acceptable to him. Yes. And he said, look, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath and this is what they're doing is okay with me. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> And uh, it, it's interesting because uh, it's interesting because uh, I, I, I use an example of a of a supervisor yes. with his work crew, and if the supervisor is there, and there maybe the work crew might be doing something that that might appear to be unacceptable, but mm. the supervisor is there. So by him being there, he's approving to what's taking place. That's right. So by Jesus being there with them, eating the grain as they're walking through the, the, the field, mm -hmm. he's approving to what they're doing. And he's mm -hmm. saying, look, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you, you need to change your focus. You know, Get your focus off of what, what, you, what you can't do mm -hmm. and, and, and put your focus on what's, what you what's can. permissible to do. Yes. And so <laughs> it, it, it's a... Uh, and you know what? He rebukes those. Uh, he rebukes those uh, religious leaders uh, <laughs> with their uh, who who thought they had some confident knowledge. Yeah, you yeah. know, because they were real confident in, in their knowledge or what they thought. They what knew. they thought they knew. And uh, and uh, but Jesus uh, uh, questioned them whether or not they had read or understood <laughs> the word. <laughs> and, and it's interesting, you know. Do you? Remember the, uh, the old commercial? Do you understand the word <laughs> uh, coming out of my mouth? Right. And, and and sometimes we we can read things and not understand. There's no understanding. Exactly. And right. so that's what he, what Jesus was implying that they didn't understand what they had read. Mm. Because remember, he says, "Have you not even read this?" And and uh, and it's one thing. Look at this. It's one thing in hearing something. You know, somebody says something to you and you hear it. Mm -hmm. It's another thing when you read something. Right. You know, it's a different way of learning, a different way of gathering, taking in information. And so he's saying, look, that uh, that have you not even read this? So <laughs> how, how did you interpret this when you read it? <laughs> and and uh, obviously they didn't interpret it the right way. And so uh, God is, is more interested in obedience than sacrifice, mm. and and you know we look at that. Uh, even the scripture talks about you know how how the one uh, the king King Saul he he wanted to to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You know when God told him to do a certain thing, go destroy all of the people, all of them. cattle, everything. Yeah. Don't don't save nothing. But and so <laughs> but what King Saul did, he he saved the. Some of the the, the cattle, the, the cattle yes. some of the he saved some of the animals. Yeah, and then he spared the king's life. Mm -hmm. He was going to destroy them people, and and guess what? That when when he was approached by the man of God by the prophet, he said, "Look, it is better to have obedience than to sacrifice." Mm -hmm. Even though he was trying to do something, thought he was doing something good, but he didn't focus on the part about being obedient. You right. needed to follow the instruction. And so that's where uh, the Lord is more interested in obedience than sacrifice. And uh, another practical point, the heart of the law leads us to, to praise God. When we, when we learn how to, to uh, in, in the heart of the law, you know, remember the law was just a tutor. The law was given to, to the people just to, to let them know that one, that they couldn't keep the law. And two was that uh, we needed some help. And so that was just a, 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 a vehicle that was going to lead us to recognize that the help we needed was Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Messiah. Mm -hmm. and, and throughout the word, it's been promised that the Messiah was coming. And uh, here's, a, here's a, a Sabbath day principle. So when he says that 
the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. That Jesus said that uh, that he was the Lord of the Sabbath, and the Lord of the Sabbath was not offended uh, <laughs> by what the disciples what, were doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the supervisor approved. You know, he approves of what the work crew is doing. And so he was not, and, and if I'm not offended, so why, why should, should you? you be offended? Yeah. But it, the Pharisees, just, they were doing what they th their job. Yeah. They were trying to find something that Jesus was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Always. 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 That's, what, that's why they attended whatever gathering that there was. They wanted to make sure that was he following the rules or the laws. Or, but they, they, didn't, they didn't really accept him as Jesus, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they, they, they did, yeah, they, they're always trying to find him. Right. Uh, in violation to, or something. Yeah, trying to hem him up. <laughs> <laughs> now, it says in verse, verse 6, it says, now this is going into uh, doing good on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. so Jesus already declared that I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't have a problem with that, but, you know, he didn't let it, let it stop there. The verse 6, it said, it happened on another Sabbath. So this might have been... Uh, a week later or at some time later, mm -hmm. but on another Sabbath, that he entered the synagogue and taught. And, and look at this for a moment, that Jesus was still following the custom. Mm -hmm. You know, even though he was who he was, he was still going into the synagogue and he was still uh, uh, going in there teaching. So he went in to talk. And it says that a man was there whose right hand was withered. And so... It was almost like it was set up because those guys are looking. Look at look at verse seven. <laughs> <laughs> so the scribes and the Pharisees watch him closely. <laughs> they want to see what he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. Now, you talking about uh, <laughs> a, a prime example of being the Lord of the, the Sabbath. So Jesus took full advantage of this opportunity, and so uh, <laughs> it says. Uh, uh, that Luke shows the rising resistance to Jesus and his followers. Yet Jesus still attended the synagogue services. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't forsake the gathering of God's people together. And, uh, and, and, and even when we might have thought that he should have reason to, you know, because uh, he knew they were plotting. <laughs> you know, later on we're going to see it says he knew their thoughts. Yeah. I say he knew their thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So even when they were plotting, he knew their thoughts, and and uh, but yet that didn't stop him from doing uh, what he was going to do. It says that the scribes watched him closely, whether he should heal on the Sabbath. Mm. Uh, so by their actions, look at this, by their actions, the Pharisees admitted that Jesus had the power yeah, of yeah. God to work miracles. Would go, that's right. You know, so they, they, they realized that, they knew that. So they, they're, in, the, in essence, they are admitting to the fact that Jesus had power mm. and he had authority from God. Power of God to work miracles. Yet they still sought to trap him, thinking that they could heal him up. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what they thought. <laughs> and it, it's something. They, they think they're going to they gonna catch him in something. And so uh, it, it, it was as if a man could, could fly and the authorities arrested him for not landing at airports. <laughs> You know, so, so, if you can fly. It's all right to fly. Yeah, it's all right to but, fly, but, <laughs> but they're going to get you because you didn't land in the airport. <laughs> they, so they, they watched him closely but had no heart for him. Mm. And, and I wrote in my notes that hearts were very far, far away. Yes. And, and um, you know, that was, um, you know, the Apostle Paul wrote something. He said that... Um, they practice a form of godliness, but uh, uh, they they their, their hearts were away from it. They yeah. they they practice it, but they didn't they didn't believe it. They just practice a form of godliness. That's what those Pharisees were doing. They were practicing a form of god godliness, but their hearts were not in it. Yeah, they were but, they were so far away from the truth. And and Jesus even challenged them on other occasions that you're supposed to be teachers. You know, you're supposed to be teaching people how to, to, to come to God, but yet you, you're you not doing that. You are actually driving people away. And uh, they would rather for that man 
that not to be healed, then they appreciate yeah. what Jesus was actually doing. They know he was a healer. They were, they were just wondering if he was going to heal them. Yeah, yeah. And they know his power. They knew his power. Yeah. But they still, for some reason, <laughs> want to say he was wrong for doing it. And it says uh, that they might find an accusation against him. <laughs> you know, they wanted they wanted something they can accuse him of. Yeah. Oh, look what he did. Mm -hmm. You know, so so Jesus uh, know their thoughts, but verse eight, he knew their thoughts. Uh, here's a practical point: we humans tend to look for opportunities to criticize other people. <laughs> now we good at that. Oh yeah. You know, we we find their faults, we criticize them, we. We uh, will pick on them. We'll we'll try to ridicule people. You know, we look for those opportunities, mm -hmm. and and rather than trying to find a common ground or finding something that could bring us together, uh, a, a lot of times things are focused on what's going to tear us apart or That's keep right. us divided. Right. And so this is what they were doing. They were they were looking uh, for opportunities to criticize, and so uh, there was a Sabbath question, verse eight and nine. You know, so Jesus said to them, I will ask you one thing. <laughs> Look at that. So <laughs> Jesus, he answers the answer with the question. Mm. Let me ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, that's the best way to handle situations. The question with a question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, let, let me ask you something. Let me see what you think. Where's your head at? Where's mm. your mind? Where's mm -hmm. your thought process? Mm -hmm. He says... Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? Mm. And 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 uh, so <laughs> so the question that Jesus had to those religious leaders, uh, he, he in effect he's saying is, is there is never a wrong day to do something good. That's right. Never a wrong day That's to right. do something good. And and Jesus actually he went about doing good. It says he went about doing good, healing all of those who were oppressed of the devil. Meaning that that was an everyday occurrence for him. So why why would he stop on on the Sabbath <laughs> if that's, he's the Lord of the Sabbath? That's the Pharisee way and, of and that. That lets us know that we can come to God any day, any day, any day of the week, any you know, time. Every day is the day of the Lord yes. that's made. Yes. Uh, the re the religious the religious leaders had no compassion or love for the needy, and so that's really what they were. Uh, portraying, mm -hmm. you know, that they would rather see this man <laughs> suffer suffer than to be healed. <laughs> and so Jesus is getting ready to set them up now. You know, so he goes on, he says, uh, uh, not only did he know their thoughts, but he he, he goes on and, and uh, he, uh, he poses a question to them because if you had a, a animal and remember that the Gospels are synoptic Gospels, meaning that that uh, the stories uh, in each Gospel uh, may be a little bit different, different. but they're related to, to almost the same concept or right. the same thing. Right. If you had an animal that was stuck <laughs> in a hole or in a ditch on yeah. the Sabbath, uh -huh. would, you, would you get them out? You go. <laughs> or would you let them stay there? Oh. <laughs> and, and so... The, the owner of that, that animal would say, I'm going to get them out. That's right. And so what? So... So, what's the what's the the difference in be healing somebody, healing somebody. On, the, on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. And so he took he took them there. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's never it's never a, a, a wrong day to do something good. Good. And uh, but those religious leaders they were so bent on, on and unwilling to let go of their rituals and their customs. And and. and you know, we have people like that today that they they stuck in in the custom or they were stuck in the tradition um, that been, that's been passed down, right? Have been handed down, and a lot of people say, you know, that's the way Mama did. You know, the story <laughs> the story about the the, the great grandmother. She uh, she used to cook a a, a ham bone, uh -huh. and um, she passed something down. So her daughter. So the grand, the great grandmother, uh, the daughter saw her, her daughter saw her cut the bone off. Uh huh. So she cut the bone off before she put it in the pot, 
And then her daughter saw her cut the bone off, and so she cut the bone off before she put it in the pot. Uh -huh. And it gets down to the to the great grandchild, and and so she asked the question, "Why did you cut the bone off?" <laughs> because that's the way we've done it. All right. And so we go back and we ask the great grandmother, "Why did she do it?" She said, "Because the pot was too small." <laughs> So she cut the bone off so it fit in the pot. Yeah, but they didn't know. They didn't know. That. <laughs> so, so people unwilling to let go of their traditions or their customs yeah. because of something that was passed down and, and not knowing the reason why, why. Uh, what's behind it. Amen. You know, so, Amen. so we, you know, we in effect uh, need to understand what's behind what we're doing. What's motivating? What's our motivating factor here? What are we, what are we getting into? Yeah. And so Jesus goes on, he says this. He, he tells the man, arise and stand here. Mm -hmm. So what is Jesus doing? He's calling this man into action. Mm -hmm. So he tells the man to rise. And do you think, uh, and let's just pose a question, that uh, it may not have been easy for him to do that. Mm -hmm. So the man had to put forth some effort to, get up. to follow this command. Arise yeah. and stand here. And he says, and he rose, and he stood, and then Jesus said to them, <laughs> now he's talking to them, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say us and them, <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to them, and he says, I'll ask you one thing, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to, to, to save your life or to destroy it? And, and I say that's a, a loaded question, because remember, Jesus knew their thoughts. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and here, all along, their thoughts were not in the right place. And so, so with their thoughts not being in the right place, uh, Jesus asked them this question. And, and when he had looked around at all of them, and, and Jesus, he's, he's spying out the, the audience. He's spying out the crowd. <laughs> he looked around at all of them. He wanted to lay his eyes on each and every one of them. And, and you, you know how people do this? You know how they... Yeah, yeah, I'm watching you. Yeah, and, and, and I'm watching you watch me. But I'm watching you watch me, I'm watching you. And so he looked at all of them, and then he goes back to the man, and he says, stretch out your hand. Now, this withered hand, I, I don't know what your impression is of a withered hand. Uh, but I, I've seen some withered hands, uh -huh. and some, uh, when you say withered, it might have been uh, shorter uh -huh. than the other one. Right, right. It, it could have been uh, uh, in an awkward position. Right. I mean, it's just withered, withered yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And, and so he said, stretch it out. And so that means that the guy had to put forth some effort to do this. Stretch out your hand. And so when he stretched out his hand, and, and he did so, his hand was restored whole as the other. Mm. Now, <laughs> I would have fell out. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and being, if I was one of the disciples, here again, we're seeing the Lord perform something miraculous. Miracles. And, and I don't know why they had so much trouble. I'm not picking on them, but yeah. the disciples themselves had so much trouble believing sometimes that he was who he said he was. Yes. Yes. But I mean, we're witnessing him do these miraculous things. Yeah. And this this guy that got this withered hand, all he needed to do was follow the command by stretching it out, and it says it, and it was restored. Right. And so that that blows my mind. That blows my mind. He says, uh, "Stretch out your hand." When the, Jesus commanded the man to stretch out your hand, he commanded the man to do something that was impossible. For him, in his current condition. For him to do, mm -hmm. because I, 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 I've actually seen those high, those hands, and certain people stationary. They can't, yeah. you know. I, I grew right, up with a, a fellow yeah. uh, uh, was like that. Mm -hmm. That's how he was born. Yeah, and matter of fact, when you, you know, don't use a limb for a while, it, it gets locked. That's in that right. Position. That's right. In that position. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. and, and the best, but, so the but, best he could. Yeah, the best he could, he, he stretched that thing out. But then to see, and this, and it, and it comes to this right here, faith. Ooh, that guy had, had to have faith, faith of seeing Jesus and work and work in progress before, mm -hmm. because, you know, like you say, that hand probably was locked like that, but he told him to stretch it out. 
He did so because he had faith. And what Jesus tell the woman, sister, thy faith, faith have made, made you whole. Amen. 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 <laughs> As a daughter, I think yep, he used that right. phrase, daughter. So, so Jesus, so, so Jesus asked him to do something that was impossible in his current condition. Right. But Jesus gave him both the command mm -hmm. and the ability to do so. To do it. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and, and, and think about well, that. Awesome we dog. hear God speak to us. Mm -hmm. He tell, tells you to go forth, or He tells you to to go ahead. That that not only is He giving you the command, but He's giving you the ability to do it. Right. And we need to just go ahead and trust it. If He tells us to move and go, we need to go ahead and move and go. Right there. And so the man put forth the effort, and he was healed. And and uh, it's something about putting forth the effort. You know, we can sit back and let God do everything. <laughs> and, and some people want. I mean, that's what some people want. They want God to do everything. Mm -hmm. But God tells us to keep moving. God yeah. wants us to, to put forth the effort and believe that faith is really... An act, faith is an action. An action. Faith is you exercising got, action. You put you know, forth. And... and because remember that without faith, it's impossible to please Him. That's right. And so when we put forth the effort, the, the, the results come forward. And, we, and, you know, and a lot of people don't see those results until they move. Mm -hmm. they don't, until they, you know, until you believe. You know, believing is an action, too. Yes. You know, and yes. I, I, you know I believe, uh, you know, in, anyway. Yeah. We, we yeah. hung up on that. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. So it says... Uh, he was healed. Ooh, look at this. It says, and he did so, and the hand was restored as whole as the other. But, verse 11, we're winding down. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 11, they were filled with rage. <laughs> you know, rather than rejoicing, rather than uh, falling down on their face and having a... And praising. Uh, uh, Change your heart and change yeah. your mind. Uh huh. Oh, they're filled with rage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> the, the reaction of the religious leaders was shocking, but true. Mm. Uh, you know, it, they, that was a true reaction. <laughs> when Jesus did this miracle on the Sabbath, he met the needs of, of simple people and, and broke a petty religious tradition of that establishment. Yeah. So he, he can, he can, Find it or confounded what they were hung up on, mm. but yet they were filled with rage. Yes, Ooh. they were filled with rage, and obviously their rage and their plotting of murder, <laughs> because they were sitting around there thinking, "What did they say?" Uh huh. But they were filled with rage and discuss with one another. With one, yeah. What they might do to Jesus. Mm. There's something about that. Ain't that something? You know, because it's okay to plot murder. On the Sabbath, but, but the it's not allowed yeah, to heal. heal. Then this man just, this brother just performed a miracle, mm -hmm. and what they doing, discussing one to another, what they might do to what Jesus. They might do and you know it wasn't nothing good. They were trying to oh, plot. No. Uh -uh. We got to get rid of. Him. We got to get rid of this guy, and, 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 and it's what crazy. Is that all behind because he healed somebody on the Sabbath. They, they believed in the power of God because, you know, they wanted to see if he could, what he was going to do. And, and, and it's my thought that they actually seen him do these things before mm -hmm. because they, they followed Jesus. You know, whatever Jesus appeared somewhere, there they were mm -hmm. to, ju to, to judge him, yeah. to see what he was doing, how he was doing it, and why he was doing it. Right. But whatever he did and whenever he did, it was wrong. Yeah. He was breaking the law. This Sunday, man. Yeah. And you're going to get out there and heal, but we're going to conspire to kill you. Yeah. Good, Jesus, evil, Pharisees, and Sadducees. That's right. That's right. That's something. That's something. That's something. So, so obviously their rage and their plotting the murder, they discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. It was far greater, was a far greater violation of the Sabbath and the healing of then the man's with the yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and uh, just like uh, getting that animal out of that ditch or out of that hole. Or whatever. On the Sabbath. The situation. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and, and, and you'd be surprised the barriers that we put up as people. 
you know, we still do that today. We put up these barriers and we will say this is permissible or, or that's not permissible on the, on the Sabbath. But remember that, that Christ is the, the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He said, I am, you know, and, and, and we need to learn how to honor that, that every day is the Lord's day. And he's going to do good and he can do good every day. I mean, and, and then matter of fact, he tells us that, that any hour of the day, any moment of the day that he's willing he said, if the guy asked him, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me. <laughs> he said, well, I'm letting you know up front, I'm willing. <laughs> he, 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 he squashes that idea. Uh -huh. He's always willing. He's willing yeah. to, to heal us. He's willing to restore us. He's willing to set, uh, to bring order out of chaos. And so Jesus wasn't trying to reform the Sabbath. He wasn't trying to, uh, to take away anything from anybody's belief. Mm-hmm. But he tried to show that in their understanding of the Sabbath, they missed the whole point. You know, they missed the point that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. That the, that that yes, that that these things will take place and they will occur on any day of the week. Any given day. Any day of the week. <laughs> the last practical point. Believers in Christ, excuse me, believers in Jesus have many opportunities to honor him by doing good sometimes at great personal loss. And 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 that that that's a true statement because any time that we are um, it's not just any time, every time that we stand on the word of God, we stand on his authority, that we it, it could be a personal loss because somebody's not gonna understand it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's gonna ridicule you or criticize you because you you're doing something that, that goes against their belief, their belief. Go, goes against uh, their tradition or goes against their custom, and and you know we we you know we have to ask ourselves uh, whose principles are we living by? Mm -hmm. You know, and some people I'm a Jesus man, I'm a Christ man. You know, so if we if we call ourselves believers, then we need to know what what what's guiding us, and you know the the things that we can can do, uh, the things that we can, shouldn't do, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you know, that was a, a quick lesson. We finished a little mm -hmm. early. Yeah. Uh, any any questions? Any well comments? done. Well done, Pastor. Amen. 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 Well, Father God, we, we thank you. Lord, thank you, Father. For allowing us a, a brief moment to look into your word. Yes. I pray, God, that our minds are clear and our hearts are open, Lord, to mm -hmm. continue to receive what you have for us. Yes. Lord, we pray for those, Lord, who <laughs> have joined in with us, that they be blessed. God, yes. whether they're traveling. Uh, whether they're they're uh, sick and shut in, Father, whether they're uh, just uh, uh, students of the Word, God, that you would bless and reward them, Lord. God, watch over them and care for them. Give them what they have need of today, Lord. And uh, and most of us just need a little bit more of you, God. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Bless those that are here, God, that you would continue to pour out your blessings upon their lives, upon yes. their families, God, and and help us, Lord, to be better at what we do. We'll always give you the praise and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.